Hey everyone, it's such a pleasure to be in your faces once again. Welcome to my channel, and if you're new here, my name is Chioma. So in today's video, I want to address a question that I am still getting quite frequently, and which I would think that I have addressed already in several of my previous videos. But on a closer thought, I realized that this community is growing bigger and bigger. Thank you so very much for that. And some people would not have had the chance to see my previous videos. That question is about how you actually go from student visa to permanent residency. Take a moment to hit the like button here. That's one of the best ways to support me on this channel and it's completely free okay i don't charge anything for liking my videos if you want to join the family the best thing to do would be to subscribe okay i am going to use my own experience obviously because i went through the same pathway myself to explain the process of going from student visa to permanent residency an overview of that process is you finish your studies you apply for your skills assessment if it is positive, you go ahead and express interest in one of the common permanent residency visas. In this case, it would be the 189 or the 190. And if your expression of interest is successful, you go ahead and apply for the visa. It's as simple as that. Very easy steps, <laughs> right? Okay. I was thinking about it just the other day and I realized that it took me exactly three years to go from point A to point B from student visa to permanent residency. Because I started my course in August of 2016. I finished in August 2018 and I became a permanent resident in August 2019, exactly three years. But one thing I must mention here is that everyone's journey is going to be different. There are a few factors that play a key role in just how long that process is going to be for you or how short. So I am going to discuss some of those things. When I finished my studies, I had to submit my documents to the assessing authority of my occupation for my migration assessment. The assessing authority is the Australian Association of Social Workers. Just by that name, I believe this gives you an idea that there are different assessing authorities for different occupations, okay? So you will most likely have a different assessing authority from mine. And just on that note, if you would like more information about the assessing authority for your particular occupation, if you're looking for where you can find that information, you can do a very simple Google search, or I would point you back to a video I made not too long ago about the skills occupation list. The skilled occupation list is not just for identifying your occupation. There's a lot of key pieces of information you can access through that resource. Okay, so please watch that video, including who your assessing authority is. When I finished my studies, some of the documents that I submitted towards my skills assessment were my recently acquired Master of Social Work qualifying degree, the transcript, evidence of previous tertiary level education, in, in this case, my bachelor degree, English language documents, then some ID documents, I had to fill out the application form and pay the assessment fees. And when it comes to your skills assessment, this would be some of the standard documents you will submit regardless of your occupation. You might be thinking, I didn't hear you mention anything about work experience. And that's true because for social work graduates here in Australia, you do not necessarily need work experience before you can apply for permanent residency. No, you don't. However, some people will choose to do an assessment on their work experience as an opportunity to build up their migration points, okay? So if you find yourself in a situation where you're not making up to the required migration points, in this case, I am talking about the cutoff, which is 65 points. If you're not up to 65 points, you might want to work a little bit, gain some work experience, and that will boost your scores towards your migration points. I hope that is making sense. But for me at that time, when I calculated my total migration scores, I was already above 65. So I decided I was going to basically try my luck and see whether I would get invited, even though I didn't have work experience as a social worker. And that was what I did and it worked for me. Even on the AASW website, they do not specify work experience assessment or employment assessment as a compulsory requirement for the migration assessments. 
The compulsory part is your qualifications. They must assess that, but it's up to you whether you want to do an employment assessment or not as part of your skills assessment. So for me, because I didn't have work experience, I did not do the employment assessment and it was completely fine. However, there are some assessing authorities out there that have very strict employment requirements. You must be able to demonstrate post-qualifying work experience up to a certain number of years. So there's usually a minimum, maybe two years or three years post-qualifying work experience, and it must be part of your skills assessment. Check out what the requirements are for your particular occupation. Going back to what I said, I submitted all those documents to the AASW and then I had to wait. It only took about two and a half weeks in my case. But again, this is also different for different people. I can't give any guarantees as to how long you'll be waiting for your assessing authority to make a decision on your skills assessment application. But for me, it was about two and a half weeks. You would recall that I mentioned that part of the documents I submitted was my English language document. So that is a key requirement. You need to find out from your assessing authority what you can do or what documents to submit to demonstrate that you meet the English language requirements. Different assessing authorities have different options and benchmarks for the English language requirements. For instance, AASW does not accept any other English exam apart from IELTS academic. Meanwhile, there are other assessing authorities that would accept any of the standardized English tests. Some of them would even be happy for you to demonstrate your English language capacity through your work experience. It's very different from occupation to occupation. So with my positive skills assessment, the next thing I did was to express interest in the 190 visa. So we were interested in the 190 visa because I was also looking to get five extra points from the state nomination. Now, if all of this is sounding confusing to you, I am going to leave a link in the description to a, to a video I made about the 190 visa. When you watch that video, it's going to make more sense. But basically, if you are looking at the 190 visa, it's a skilled nominated visa, or I prefer to call it the state nominated visa because you have to nominate a particular state. And if that nomination is successful, the state will contribute five points towards your total migration points. Does that make sense now? Yeah. So I expressed interest. And to express interest, you do it on a portal called Skill Select. It's completely free. You don't pay anything and you also do not need to submit any documents for your expression of interest. The skill select process will ask you to provide information related to your skills assessment as well as your English language proficiency. So they would ask you things like the date when you took your test, what scores you got in your test, the reference number to your skills assessment document, when you completed the skills assessment. So it requires that information, but it is not going to ask you to upload those documents just yet. The purpose of the expression of interest is so that there can be a pre-assessment to see whether you actually meet the requirements to go ahead and apply for the visa. So once you express interest, you wait. Again, this will be a different experience from person to person. Some people wait a lot longer than some others. For me, I believe it took about three weeks, if I remember correctly, for my expression of interest to be processed. And then again, it was successful. So I got an invitation to go ahead and apply for the visa. And I also got my extra five points from state nomination. And after that happened, I went ahead to apply for my visa. If you would like more information about the step-by-step -step process of applying for the 189 visa or the 190 visa, check out the videos that I will link in the description box. But that is essentially how I went from student visa to permanent residency. And that is what it would look like for most other people going through the same pathway. I hope this video has been helpful. Don't forget to give me a like before you go. Okay. And I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.